Marianne's mother Ella wanted her grandson to be named Jacob, but she and her husband disagreed. Ella inserted herself into every aspect of their parenting and tried to do the unspeakable when they set up boundaries. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing and joining our family to make it bigger and bigger, also activate the notification bell to never miss an update. Marianne and Richard were expecting their first child, but they decided to wait until birth to find out the gender. Ella, Marianne's mother, disagreed with this decision because she wanted to know everything about her coming grandson. How about I call your doctor and find out for myself? Then I can throw you guys an appropriate baby shower and maybe even a gender reveal. Ella said enthusiastically. No mom, we have made our decision. You have to respect our wishes, Marianne uttered frustrated. I'm just excited about my grandbaby. You can't blame me and I also have more experience than both of you. You should listen to me, Ella added pouting. I know you have more experience, but this is our baby. We're the parents and we have decided, Richard chimed in. While he didn't hate his mother-in-law, she's been getting on his nerves since they announced the pregnancy. Ella left their house reluctantly that night and they both breathed a sigh of relief. We really shouldn't have moved that close to your mother, Richard muttered. Marianne and Richard met in college and moved to Cincinnati, Ohio, to be closer to family. At first, it seemed like a great decision. They wouldn't have to worry about an older woman alone while they were thousands of miles away. But now, they were both regretting their choice. I know, honey. But well, it is her first grandchild, Marianne said, trying to soothe her husband. The next day, Ella returned and shocked them. The baby's name has to be Jacob, after my father, Ella revealed. Mom, we haven't chosen a name, and we don't even know the gender yet. Marion said gently. But Jacob is perfect and that means you don't have to worry about the name anymore. I have taken that stress off your life, Ella continued. What if the baby is a girl? Marion wondered. No, I have a feeling it's going to be a boy. You're carrying that belly in a certain way, I'm sure of it. We're finally going to have a boy in the family, Ella cheered. Marianne knew that her mother had always wanted a boy, but she was crossing many lines. Also, Richard was not going to like that name either, but she decided to keep the peace for now. We'll see, Mom, she replied. Marianne and Richard had a boy, and they decided to name him Ashton because they both liked that name so much. Ella pouted and whined about it as much as she could, but they didn't want to hear it. Marianne thought they had finally shut her antics down, but whenever Ella came over, she called their son Jacob. At first, they thought it was only a mistake. However, she continued doing that every time, no matter how they corrected her. Richard started to ignore and avoid her whenever she came over. You should give me the baby for the baby weekend. That way you can rest, Ella suggested one day. I can take him home and probably get him to sleep easily. Neither of them liked that idea. They also didn't like Ella's tone, as if she was a better parent, so they rejected her offer. Regardless, Ella tried to take the baby with her several times, with excuses like it's just a walk or I'll be right back. Marion was getting tired of it, especially because she didn't sleep well with a newborn, so she gave her mother a severe talking to and thought it worked. She heard Ella calling the baby Ashton and her attitude changed. She behaved and didn't cross their boundaries. Marianne thought everything was back to normal, so one day, when Richard suggested a movie date to give them a break, she asked Ella to babysit. Of course, you guys have been so busy, go have fun, she beamed. Ugh, mom, if you need anything don't hesitate to call us. Marion said worriedly. Ella told them not to worry and they drove off to the movie theater. But Ella had no plans of just babysitting. Those two can't raise this beautiful boy. I'm taking him with me, she thought, rushing around their house to pack her grandson's things. She grabbed the baby after gathering everything and went to the front door. Mom, we forgot my cell phone. What Marion began but stopped when she saw her mother with everything Ashton owned. What are you doing? Richard yelled. Nothing. We're going for a drive because that always worked for Ashton. Babies fall asleep right away, Ella lied. Mother, give me the baby right now, Marianne said sternly. No, really. I, you guys don't understand. I can do a better job, Ella stammered. Finally, Richard rushed to her and took Ashton away forcefully but carefully. Leave our house immediately before I call the cops, Richard seethed and took the baby to the nursery. Ella looked at her daughter with tears in her eyes. I didn't, I don't know, he's my baby. I can raise him better, she stuttered. He's not your baby. Mother, you need therapy. Leave now. You are not welcome here anymore, Marianne hissed and went to check on the baby. Ella left, and they didn't see her for several months, but Marianne heard from her aunt that Ella got a therapist to work on her issues. After several years, they finally allowed her to be a part of Ashton's life, but they never left him alone with her. 
Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment to let us know your thoughts. Your support means the world to us and helps us to continue creating quality content. Thank you for being a part of our family.